clean what's going on it's engraving here with another video and in this video oh so i see a lot of y'all came through already we didn't even start yet but in this video we are here to talk about something pretty interesting this is a very interesting question from subscribers uh this was from my guy on twitter to be quite frank that is a fire twitter handle i like that um but his was it was sort of a question um or really getting how i feel about the ravens up and coming talent and good evening everybody what's up billy what's going on ty appreciate y'all coming through um and everybody else that joins us uh and again the question was from my guy to be quite frank he asked how do you feel about the ravens up and coming talent uh guys like woodrum alex collins marlon humphrey tim white uh, to name it, Blue Broski, what's up? I ain't seen you in a while. What's going on, man? Appreciate you coming through. Um, but and that's a pretty good question. But first, before we answer that question, let me introduce myself. Me, I'm Engraving Vids. This is my YouTube channel, Engraving Vids, and I'm a Ravens fan. Um, and even though I'm a Ravens fan on this YouTube channel, we just talk about football, period. So if you're a Ravens fan, if you're a Steelers fan, shout out to my guy Billy. What's up, JB Smooth? If you're just a fan of football, period, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Turn your notifications on so when we go live like this, you never miss a video. And you can follow on Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. Everything is engraving vids. And like my guy Ryan Mallet says, every single video, make sure you leave a like on the video because it's completely free. It's completely free. You don't have to pay for that. Uh, but anyway, like I was saying, um... My guy, to be quite frank's question was, how do you feel about the Ravens' upcoming talent? Um, and one of the guys he mentioned was Alex Collins. Now, with Alex Collins, um, he is somebody that the Ravens, they really liked him, apparently from what he did in practice. He apparently really showed them that he could make some things happen. Um, because if you go back, um, if you go back, you can... You can go back to when, remember when we signed, uh, see, I can't even remember his name now. The guy we signed who used to be the Bears running back, Jeremy Langford, that was his name. Remember when well, Remember when the Ravens signed the running back, Jeremy Langford? And a lot of us, including myself, I was like, oh man, we got a guy that started on the Bears before, and the guy did pretty good for the Bears before, and we got this guy on our practice squad. We actually had Jeremy uh, Langford on our practice squad, and when that happened, I couldn't believe it. I'm like, wow. So we got Terrence West, we got Danny Woodhead, we got um, Kenneth Dixon, we got Buck Allen, we got Jeremy Langford. I'm like, we got all these guys that have started before. We got so many starter running backs on our team. And we got Jeremy Langford, and, we, and then we got some other guy named Alice Collins. I was like, I don't know who he is. I heard he's from Seattle, but I don't know anything about him. So we brought up Jeremy Langford from the practice squad, um, put him on the active roster, but I think that lasted maybe like a day or two. And then next thing you know, they cut Jeremy Langford and brought Alex Collins up from the practice squad, and they opted to stay, stick with him instead of Jeremy Langford. And I was like, what? I couldn't believe it. I didn't know what to expect from him. I was like, I don't know who this Alex Collins guy is, but... He's probably just going to be another body. He ain't going to last on a team or whatever. Nine, ten weeks later, the guys are starting running back. And he's been doing quite well, man. For the most part. Um, Alex Collins. I like Alex Collins. Um, is he going to be the guy in Baltimore as far as being the running back? That I'm still not sold on completely yet. Because I feel like they're not sold on him completely yet. Now, when I say that, um, I don't think that the Ravens trust him all the way yet because this is a guy He they only leave him out there on first and second down every single third down. They take him out immediately They never leave him out there on uh, on third downs. They always take up. They always take him out um, So I don't think the Ravens are sold on him yet But I'm, I'm hoping they give him more opportunities as it as the season continues um, So Alex Collins, I mean he's he does got a nice, he, 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 he always falls forward. That's the thing about him. Except for there'd be some plays where he try to make something happen. If it's not in there, he might spin around or whatever. But for the most part, he always falls forward. That's my favorite part about him. And 
he I think he's like sneaky good at breaking tackles. He's sneaky good at breaking tackles. Um so with Alex Collins, um I, I like him because he he's not the fastest in the world, but he got some decent speed and he loves to break tackles too. So he's he's nice, man. He's he's nice. He has been um a lot better than expected. Uh something else somebody else that uh to be quite frank asked about was Marlon Humphrey. Marlon Humphrey has exceeded expectations, man. I'm so proud of Marlon Humphrey. I love that guy. Um, he has been a great cornerback. He has been a great cornerback. With Marlon Humphrey, um, usually when you throw a rookie into the fire, especially a rookie cornerback, that's taking a big risk. That's taking a huge risk throwing a rookie into the fire because cornerback is such an important position. I mean, all every position on football is important, but cornerback... Um, you throw him out into the fire and he can easily get exposed. Easily. But with Marlon Humphrey, um, I thought he was going to get his first pick a long time ago. Uh, especially in that Raiders game because they kept throwing at him, throwing at him, throwing at him. But Marlon Humphrey has been somebody who's been in great position uh, when he's on the field. He's a great tackler. Um, he showed that in the preseason, showed in the regular season too. He's a great tackler. And he's a great cover corner. Man to man, he's excellent, man. He's playing like, he plays like a first round draft pick. See, us Ravens, us Ravens fans, the Ravens team, we're not used to first round draft picks playing like first round draft picks. Well, besides Ronnie Stanley, but other than that, what we had recently, Bashar Perryman, um, we had Bashar Perryman, we had the Matt Elams of the world. We uh, It's just been rough for us. It's been rough for us with our first round draft picks. But um, Marlon Humphrey has been great. He's been great. Um, and, yeah, like Chick has just mentioned, he did get his first pick against Hundley. Even though it was against Hundley, it was still a first, his first interception. So, and I was, it was almost a pick six. I know he was trying to get a pick six, but it's all good, man. He'll get that eventually. Um, so, he has been great, man. He's been great. Marlon Humphrey has been great. And the fact that they trust him now. You can tell he's somebody they trust. Alex Collins, they don't trust all the way. Marlon Humphrey, they trust that guy because Jimmy Smith, throughout the season, he's been dealing with his Achilles injury. So they'll put in Marlon Humphrey uh, on one side and put him as a starter uh, alongside Brandon Carr. And sometimes they'll even take out Brandon Carr and put in Marlon Humphrey over Brandon Carr. And they switch him in and out, but they trust him because they're willing to put him out there with only one other cornerback on the field. Sometimes other cornerbacks too, but they wouldn't have willing to put him out there against one of the best receivers or one of the outside receivers on a the team. They trust him, and he's shown that he is trustworthy. Uh, back to Alex Collins real quick. He had a fumbling problem when he first started, but he hasn't fumbled for like, I think the past five weeks, they said. Something like that. But they improved it, and they actually, that's something. See, shout out to the Ravens for finally actually following through on their word with something based on offense because they always say every week oh yeah offense got to get better offense got to do better offense got to score points offense got to change offense got to be better offense got to bring more to the table blah 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 they always do that every week us Ravens fans used to the same old story especially when they lose now um with uh oh with Alex Collins when he was first fumbling I think it, whether it was John Harbaugh I think it was Harbaugh I'm pretty sure it was but they were like um he said that the way that he holds the ball, his fumbling issues can be corrected. He said his fumbling issues can be corrected. And the dude hasn't fumbled since. That's crazy. He has not fumbled since. And, oh, yeah, hey, chickas, that'd be nice. Marlon Humphrey get, a, get some more picks on uh, this coming Monday night. So they definitely improved that with Alex Collins. Now, another person that, um, that to be quite frank, asked about, there's somebody whose name has been coming up a lot. I mean, it's been coming up a lot throughout the entire season, and that's Josh Woodrum. Uh, Josh Woodrum. Now, with Josh Woodrum, I don't consider him part of the up-and-coming Ravens talent. Um, reason being was because he's on a practice squad. Um, I doubt he'll even be there next year because I, I, I'm pretty sure that the Ravens are going to draft a quarterback um, to start just getting ready because I don't think Mallard's going to be back another year. Um, and it's time. It's time. Um, Josh Woodrum is... Josh Woodrum and Josh Woodrum. He is another... He is Brent Renner 2.0. Um, he's a quarterback that got a lot of hype in the preseason because they were a lot of fun to watch in the preseason. 
They made those preseason games enjoyable. Um, but he, yeah, like somebody mentioned, he did play with the, he didn't even really play with the starters. Um, and we don't know what he can do in a regular season. But even though that could be a, a sneaky good thing, because he could actually be pretty good in the regular season. But it's something that we just, for now, we just won't know. And um, I don't, could he be better than Joe Flacco? Hey, he could be. But could he be worse than Joe Flacco? Hey, he could be. So it's just one of those things we'll never know. We'll never know. Me, what I said earlier, um, and I'm, I still wouldn't be opposed to this, but um, he he could uh, just just that unknown factor is what is what not bothers us, but what we what we'll think about the most. Could he have come in and done some things for this team? We'll never know. It's possible that he could have. It's possible. But again, since it didn't happen, we won't know. But Josh Woodrum, I wouldn't consider him part of the Ravens' future because I'm sure he's not even gonna be. He's not even gonna be there uh, next year. He's not gonna be there next year. Oh, Connor Bark talking about uh, Gary uh, Gary Sandusky, right? And the hay is in the barn. I, I love hearing that because that means the Ravens actually won. I love hearing that because that means they won. That means they won. Um. Who, oh, and the last person that he mentioned was Tim White. Wide receiver Tim White, number six, I believe. Well, number six in preseason. That wouldn't have been his number if he made it to the regular season. He was somebody, based on his first couple games, he was somebody that would have made this roster. And would he have gotten much of an opportunity? I doubt it. Because in those first, uh, really throughout the entire season, Besides last game, um, and besides the guys getting hurt, the Ravens have stuck with Brashad Perryman, Jeremy Macklin, and Mike Wallace as the starters. Um, and then behind him would have was Campanero, uh, and then you had Chris Moore too. You had Chris Matthews. So if Tim White, I think he would have made the roster over Chris Matthews, or maybe over Chris Moore, possibly over Chris Moore. Um, but again, it's one of those things that we'll never know because he got hurt. He had a stump injury, and they put him on injury reserve in a heartbeat. Now I was thinking, uh, okay, you got a thumb injury. Um, all right, I didn't. I, I I think they really wanted to stash him. To be honest, I think they wanted to stash him because I think they know that they got a future in Tim White possibly, and I don't think they wanted anybody else to grab this guy. So that's why they put him on injury reserve. Because Ravens have been known to do that. I mean, it happens around the league period, but Ravens are definitely known to do that. They do it a lot. They do it a whole lot. So I think Tim White may have a bright future. Because he made some nice plays in the preseason. And yes, I know it was a preseason, but he did still make some nice plays. He had a nice punt return. He had some nice catches. He had a nice touchdown catch. Uh, he, he he looked the part. He looked the part. And who knows what will happen next year. We'll definitely have a, an open spot uh, based on Brashad Perryman this year. Because... I know John Harbaugh said he hopes Rashad Perryman is a little upset and he hopes he's annoyed and all that good stuff. But um, we may have an open uh, wide receiver spot. Oh, we have, we might have a couple. Well, Mike Wallace probably going to be going too because it's the last year of his contract. Ain't no way this dude coming back to Baltimore. Unless these dudes make the playoffs and they do some things. Maybe he still might not even come back to Baltimore. Um, so yeah, we'll see how it goes with that. Man, I, I hate when these bikes drive in the drive on the uh in that little bike lane i know that's a lane dedicated to them but it's still kind of annoying because you feel like they're so close to the road and i almost feel like it's like grand theft auto or something and where you can just knock them off um anyway um so yeah that's that any other guys that i could think of as up and coming ravens talent um that he didn't mention because those were those are the only people he mentioned he mixed mentioned alex collins marlon humphrey um josh woodrum and tim white so the other person, the other people that he that he didn't mention, I would think um, up and coming talent would be Ronnie Stanley. Um, he's shown that he is a beast. He's a great player. Um, I can't. Jimmy Smith is too old to be up and coming. Um, who else? Who's a young guy on the Ravens that makes a good impact? Though? I can't think. Oh, um, pass rushes, but they haven't really been. I mean, that is our talent, though. I guess because he got Brian. Bronson Kafusi, got Camille Correa, we got, oh, Peanut, Peanut, Peanut is somebody, young guy that's up and coming, um, 
Peanut is gonna be good, man. I mean, he's already good. He's a, that dude is a playmaker. That and that's exactly what we need on the team. Playmate. That dude is always around the ball. He's always creating some kind of turnover in somehow, some way. Um, he is a play. Oh, Tavon Young, man. Forgot about our guy, man. Sucks that he went on injury reserve. That's another one. Appreciate that, JB. That's another one. Tavon Young. Yes. He played corner for us. He played great for us last year. Um, now, man, just imagine, man. Think about it. Think about this. Um, Brandon Carr's been playing great for us. He's been a great pickup. Love Brandon Carr. So, Jimmy Smith, Brandon Carr, Marlon Humphrey, Tavon Young, Anthony Levine, Maurice Kennedy, Ladarius Webb. Man, the... <sighs> cornerback. Imagine if everybody was healthy. But even with some of those guys not healthy, or with just Tavon Young, we got some nice depth at corner. And we've had an, an immediate, an immediate reversal of luck uh, with the with the bad cornerbacks, with bad cornerback play. Jalen Hill too, man, I forgot. That's when you know you got depth when you can you forget about corners on your team. This hasn't happened in, this never happened before. It's never happened before. It's never happened before. Tim White's not coming back this season. He's on injury reserve. Um, but more up and coming talent. Yeah, somebody just mentioned uh, Kenneth Dixon. With him, I don't know, man. He was a good running back, but apparently he was on a juice. So, um, well, not the juice because that's steroids. But he has some performance enhancing enhancement. Ah, he has some performance enhancing drugs, PEDs, and he got suspended for it. Then he turns around while he's suspended. He gets suspended again. For uh, substance abuse. The dude got suspended for substance abuse. Wow, somebody who wasn't supposed to go, they went. And, oof, if they would have hit me, I could have got a lot of money. Because he was not supposed to be going. Um, but anyway, he got suspended. I, I, I feel like Ravens, they're not done with him because they don't give up on those uh, people who get suspended that easily. Uh, for example, check out Darren Waller. Um... Nick Boyle too. Oh gosh, he's another. I, I, those are guys who I, I I don't know about those guys, man. I don't know about those guys because they Kenneth Dixon. How did, how do you get suspended? Like how did, that's he got suspended on his day off, man. My guy got suspended on his day off. He got suspended while he was suspended, and then Nick Boyle. Nick Boyle, one more strike. He out of there, buddy. He out of there for a year, so he can't be trusted. Well, well, I'm so glad he didn't ball out this year. Oh, Ryan Jensen, he's another one. I'm so glad Nick Boyle didn't ball out this year because what if he would have balled out and then they're in a predicament where they got to pay him all this money uh, for his contract because um, he's, a, he's a great player. But if he would have balled out, then you would have had to pay a suspended guy. But anyway, I'm about to get off of here now. Um, appreciate y'all. I'm going to see y'all in a little bit. We're going to talk about some stuff in a little bit. Um, so I'll see y'all real soon. But appreciate, uh, to be quite frank, thank you for that question. That was a real good question, man. We needed something like that. That was a real good one. Real good one. Appreciate y'all coming through. Crazy fact. Oh, the Ravens only had six interceptions the entire season? Wow. It's crazy, man. Crazy, crazy, crazy. But all right, I'll catch up with y'all in a little bit. Appreciate y'all, and I'm out.